got a big stretch coming up, five or seven on the road. How, how are you preparing any differently, or is just uh, kind of the usual grind? Yeah, I mean, it's it's what we all say, but it's just a fact. It's one game at a time, and this uh, the challenge of, of you know the LMU team is uh, is you know it, it's it, it creates a real um, urgency to be able to play our next half against them better than the last half we played against them. The second half of the game uh, a couple of weeks ago here, um, they outscored us, they out rebounded us, they out hustled us, and you know that's. Uh, that's a real concern for us, and hopefully we can uh, deal with their pressure. They, they trapped in the backcourt, pressured. They had two or three little schemes in the, the front court to kind of take our entries away. So, um, you know, hopefully our guys will, will be ready for uh, a really athletic, competitive team that's kind of struggling to win, you know, and, and that's those are desperate teams, and, you know, desperate teams cause, you know, real problems any time of year, but especially this time of year. The play of, um, of Yoli and Elijah has been brought up a lot, just playing at such a high level. You've had the opportunity to coach a lot of really good players that were able to play at a high level. Is there, is there a common characteristic amongst those guys that, uh, that allow them to play at such a high level? Well, the thing that all, always impresses me is you know, their, their consistency, their ability to do it game after game when people know what's coming, they scheme it, they scout it, and then, you know, guys are still able to, you know, perform at a high level. And so, uh, you know, it, it, the, the one common deni- denominator in all those guys is obviously their competitive, um, you know, the spirit that they have as far as competing. Um, but I, I do think there's a pace to each guy to where they can, um, you know, they, they as much as whatever the other team's trying to do to them, uh, they get to, they they play game after game uh, within themselves and with in, in, with their pace and they don't really get sped up they don't get uh, in a hurry um, you know and and I think for you know especially offensively that's you know that's a great way to play uh, I, I think they can both of them continue to get better defensively Yo has um, become you know a great defensive rebounder and a shot blocker and. Elijah guards their best perimeter player with physical, you know, size and strength, and so and he and he's a really good rebounder too. So, uh, but I would say the common denominator would be that their competitiveness and their ability to play at their pace, game after game. What are some things you stress with your team when you're going on the road that they need to take care of in, in those settings? Well, I, I think I think the you know the, the first thing is you have to trust what we do to be good. Okay, cuz you can't go you can't go out there and think that, you know, you're going to just reinvent the wheel each game and figure out a different way to win. It it, it when you do and, and we've obviously proven over the course of the year that when we do what we do and we're good at it that you know, that we have good results. And so the first thing is to trust it and the second thing is to execute it and actually do it. So um I think that uh you know, I, I, I never really have, have uh, changed the approach or, you know, told our guys, you know, we need to do this and not this and uh, as far as comparing road and home games together. But, um, you know, com- com- competing on the road uh, together as a group with this team has been, has been pretty good. The guys have been together and we've executed pretty well. And, and we've got a, a heck of a challenge ahead of us with the schedule. Is, is Dalton giving you what you can have expected for the couple games? You know, I, I think that uh, his energy and his physical presence is good. I think, um, you know, his ability to actually uh, make plays uh, when they're there. He's, mi- he's missing some stuff, and uh, but has nothing to do with his heart or his mind. I think it just has to do with the feel of the game that you know he hasn't played for a long time and uh, he, he just needs more minutes more reps but he's helping our team we're really glad to have him back there, there was a couple plays where he, he actually was on Landau at St. Mary I mean obviously 
that wasn't by design, I don't think. But yeah, well, it, what, what, what they do, you know, they, 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 they're, they're pretty good at what they do. And so you, you try to stop one thing, and then you give up a few other things. And sometimes that's personnel issues. And they're so good with the ball late in the clock that they always find it. And uh, But I thought the adult, you know, did a pretty good job of fronting them, getting around in front of them and actually changed two or three of their schemes. The way we fronted them, he didn't want to – Jock to be fighting any more down there, or maybe pick up a foul or whatever. So, uh, you know, they brought him to the high post and changed some things. But so, and I, th- I think a lot of that was just the energy that Jock Dalt was playing with, to try to front him. There's a report coming out of Gonzaga that the administration is encouraging their students not to dress up as missionaries and mock the church, whatever. I was wondering. I mean, I know you served a mission. A lot of players served missions. Has that ever bothered you? You ever noticed that kind of stuff? What, what's your perspective on that? You know, students are, they're great. That's so, that's one of the funnest things about uh, the game, college basketball, is students at the games. And, you know, I, the only really thing I have to say about that is, I mean, I served a mission years ago, and I never wore a bike helmet. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe keep the bike helmets up at home, you know, that's mm-hmm. fine. Dave, obviously Gonzaga has a, the Utah kid, Jesse Wade. Did you recruit him at all? Can you? Can yeah, we saw Jesse a lot. Jesse played with uh, with Zach on uh, AAU team, and uh, you know it was a numbers thing. When you when you think of the people we had committed at the time when Jesse was coming through here, uh, you know we had Nick and and Frank, and I mean we had we had a lot of little point guards and TJ. So it just that's kind of how it went. Did he re- he committed pretty early. Did that maybe catch you off guard a little bit too? That, that no, we we, we no. were pretty well informed the whole time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anything else? It's, it's a big weekend for coaches versus cancer, and you've obviously been involved with it for a year. Did you bid on my shoes? Maybe. <laughs> okay, that's good. I hope you get them. I, lo- I lost the bid though. So oh, okay. <laughs> I, I didn't have as much money. So. <laughs> How, but how have you just seen kind of that foundation that the the program, I guess, evolve or has it evolved? Kind of, it seems like it's a little bit more forefront nowadays. Yeah, it is. I mean, it used to be a game. Now it's a week. You know, so it's two games, and it used to be a pair of shoes. Now it's a tie. I mean, it, every everything is is, uh, and it's still suits and sneakers. And a lot of coaches don't really understand that polos and sneakers is a different, you know. Uh, Event. It's usually during the uh, the tournaments early in the season. But uh, you know, for me, I, I got involved 30 years ago when I was at Dixie, when I was coaching there. And someone from the American Cancer Society called me and asked me if we'd do a little three-point shot, try to get you know a, a donations for every three-pointer that we made. And so we did it. Had a sign outside in our hallway when we entered. And you know, for three or four years, that was my way of kind of participating in the, uh, you know, Coaches versus Cancer, American Cancer Society. And uh, and then after I became the head coach here, um, I was asked to, you know, serve on the board. And so that just kind of makes you, you know, participate in, in all the things that they do. And so um, I'm in all the meetings, that, you know, in the Final Four and during the spring there's a conference call and, uh, the summer, midsummer, there's a conference call, and you talk about all the things that people are doing, uh, you know, across the country to try to raise money, encourage, um, you know, coaches to do that. It's a little bit difficult here because of the the, the university stance with fundraisers. Where the United Way is our sponsorship of choice, or, or uh, our uh, foundation of choice, or you know, whatever charity of choice. So. But we do the best that we can to try to, um, you know, help fight the the cause and find as many, you know, ways to raise money and awareness as we can. So, okay, part of the reason I'm losing my hair is these 9 p.m. starts. Oh my! <laughs> the other day, Tom said that the trade-off is TV, and that you're going to take TV anytime you can get it. Basically, ESPN. I guess. What's your feeling on that? Is that is that kind of your your same? You know, I, I think I think as a as a coach, you really like the 
um, the consistency of the times. You know, uh, I would much rather play, play early personally than late. Um, you know, here at BYU, with the coverage that we have with BYU TV, I mean, it doesn't matter really when we're going to play. We're going to be on a station that basically everybody can watch if they want. And uh, and so, you know, and then, then for us, we deal with we're the only one out of the time zone. You know, the whole league is in the Pacific zone, and we're in the mountain. And so we play an 8 o'clock you know, start over there, or nine o'clock start here, and it challenges us. I think for the Saturday game a little bit with, uh, uh, you know, just that that preparation, and it, it maybe it doesn't seem like a lot, but uh, you know, you, like, like we'll leave Wednesday and move to Pacific time, and then we'll come home on Sunday, and you know, try to get it all put back together again, and so you know, I'll, I'll, I'll probably get. I don't know. We're supposed to yield and be so excited for the ESPN contract, and we are, and I am. But I, I, I think BYU TV does a great job of covering our stuff too. So, and the consistency would be really nice. The time consistency would be really nice for an old guy like me. <laughs> and me. Kyle, <laughs> Kyle Collins was had a couple of ten-day contracts with the Mavericks. I don't know if you had a chance to see him play much, but what are your thoughts? On I'm, so, I'm just really so I'm happy for him. I'm happy for his family. I mean, this has been uh, you know, something that, that Kyle has worked so hard for. And, you know, he's kind of had to take a different path. And, I, I you know, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, that, that they all should I mean, be really, really proud of him. And we're proud of him as a, uh, you know, as a program. Uh, and I think he's got a real future. You know, I really do. I, the way the league uh, has gone is those guys – you know that can that can guard one through four, and they can just switch. You know, and he can guard a point guard and guard a four man if he continues to develop. And you, you know, nobody you know works at it from top to bottom as well as he do. As far as he does, as far as you know, his his uh, nutrition aspects and his workout and his regiment and his discipline. And I mean, when I watched that guy rehab from his ACL injury. And I mean, you, you you can have nothing but respect for how he approaches uh, his day every day. And so, you know, and I know the Mavericks really like him. I, I hope that uh, you know he can he gets somewhere close here where they they either have to sign him or release him because he can't get another 10-day contract. And uh, and hopefully he can end up with uh, you know a, a full second half experience in the league and. And then find his niche because hey, I mean he he did something here that uh, you know is you guys all watched it happen, and it just seemed so normal, so easy for him, and no one has done that in ever in the history of the NCAA, not even close, as far as the triple doubles were concerned, and his ability to affect a game in so many areas. I would challenge anyone. I, you might be able to go back years and years ago, but to to find a a, 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 a NCAA team that's been playing over a hundred years of basketball and the all-time leading rebounder also is the all-time leading assist man. I don't know if you'll see it anywhere, but what I remember, I was asked the other day about some some of my memories of the West Coast Conference tournament in Vegas. And uh, one of my real memories is watching Kyle get a triple-double in a game there. And the last piece of the triple-double was a point. And I'll bet you there's not very many triple-doubles that go that way either, Mm -hmm. where you've got the assists and the rebounds before you've got the ten points. So I'm, I'm, I'm... I, I really am. I'm, I'm impressed by him every day. He was here this summer uh, in in the facility in the annex every day, uh, sometimes twice a day, sometimes having in by himself, in with somebody rebounding from him, in with a, a trainer from somewhere teaching him, you know, other things, new things. So he's earned it, and I hope it works out for him. Long answer, short question.